The beginning of World War II is different for the Canadians this time. Canada now is an independent country and can decide whether they will join the war or not. Prime Minister King didn't support the idea of Canada being involved again in another world conflict. But through the peer pressure of the Conservative Party and the royal couple rallying for support, Canada declared war against Germany on September 10, 1939. Though the memories of World War I were still fresh for many Canadians, Canada still had no trouble finding volunteers. In September alone, over 58,330 people volunteered for service. Some were attracted by the private pay of a $1.30 a day, and many still felt strong ties with Britain. But others came forward with a sense of newfound national pride. However, the promise of no conscription making was broken. Once again, the nation faced an issue of conscription and it divided the whole nation. King at first passed under the NRMA Act where it allows conscripts only for home defense, but the issue of overseas conscription was still a problem. King resolved into setting a policy where he gets the opinions of Canadians. Majority agreed upon the overseas conscription, except for the Quebecers. It was not later till 1944 where conscripts were sent overseas because King wants them to volunteer instead. Not all went peacefully, some refused to leave, and there were riots. Only 2,643 Canadian conscripts reached the front. With the declaration of war, the Canadian government got immediately involved in the planning and control of the economy. Canada set a total war, which means to do whatever it takes to gear up the economy and to meet wartime demands. Industries were told to produce more and manufacture goods they never had never made before. Soon, Vancouver was building ships for the Navy. Canada's core industries were producing military vehicles and tanks. Even farmers were told to produce more wheat, beef, and other foods. The economy was boomed by the declaration of total war. Rural areas become industrialized and more people are having more money to spend. This then led to an inflation. There are less goods that is able to be bought for everything was being shipped outside. By 1942, Canadians were receiving rations. Before long, there was a shortage of labor, and just like World War I, women took the places of men and work as drillers, welders, and operators. Rosie the Riveter became a popular nickname for these working women. However, women were still not allowed to join the combat, and most single women were prioritized to enter the workforce for they get less family obligations. Meanwhile, in the war zone, Canadians were anxious to participate. When the Battle of Atlantic broke out, Canada's contribution was very remarkable. Britain was completely dependent on food and military supplies from Canada and US. The Allies traveled in convoys to protect the cargoes, but the German U-boats continued to destroy them. And so Canada started building small warships called corvettes, which helped the Allies big time, especially when Britain cracked the German naval hold. Like the naval force, the Air Force too grew quickly after the war began. They participated in one of the most controversial missions of the war, bombing over Germans. The mission required no mercy and to bomb any German on site. The Allied success in Rome was followed by the biggest Allied invasion of the war. On June 6, 1944, known as the D-Day, the Allies launched Operation Overlord, where the goal is to fully conquer Europe. Every country was given a part and Canada was given a separate task, the liberation of Netherlands. Though casualties were high, Canadians managed to won over the Germans, get them surrounded and surrender. Eventually, Canadian army trucks were delivering tons of foods a day to the civilians. Canadians were hailed as heroes in victory parades throughout the Netherlands. World War II is no different with World War I in terms of social and racial discrimination. The Germans developed a superiority complex where they started prosecuting Jews, Gypsies, Slavs, and other people they considered inferior. By 1945, the Germans had murdered more than 6 million of these people. This has become known as the Holocaust. Canadians were divided among the issue of Holocaust. 
The government found no reason to accept Jewish refugees and think that while Canada is under the state of unemployment, there will be no open-door policy. The citizens, however, didn't share the anti-Semitic views of the government and rallied for more human immigration policy. On the other hand, Canadians too have their own issue of discrimination. Many Canadians felt threatened to their security from the Japanese distant people living in the country because of the Japanese bombings in the US. Though these Japanese distant citizens already live in Canada for generations, they were suspected as spies and were forced to settle in an internment camps. Later on, the government had the Japanese belongings confiscated and sold. It was not until 1988 that the federal government apologized for its actions. Discrimination was still a depressing issue that hasn't changed over the course of World War I. African Canadians weren't given ranks in the army and women weren't still allowed to join and serve into the military force. World War II, however, gave Canada again a spotlight. Canada provided major military and economic support to the Allies. During the battles at the sea, Canada helped by supplying foods and military support. By the end of the war, Canada was known as the arsenal of democracy. In the end, it was the Americans that ended the war. When the Germans were all defeated and Hitler committed suicide, there were only the Japanese left who still kept on pushing through. US finished them once and for all and made a massive force of destruction, the atomic bomb. Millions of people died in Japan, and the explosion was so strong it set people right into ashes. Right then, Japan surrendered, and the world war is over.